Welcome to Ford High School Weekly. I'm your host, Dion Amade. On this week's episode, we're going to be talking to Josh Blankenship. Coach Blankenship, how's it going? Great. Excited to be here with you. I, f- I feel like I, s- I say that often now, Coach Blankenship, Coach Blankenship. <laughs> I feel like even when you're running around town, like I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty active. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, doing things safely, but I'm out there uh, socially uh, uh, downtown and everything. And every time I run into somebody and they're like, "Yeah, my name's Blankenship," I'm like, "Are you in a relation to to the other Blankenships?" <laughs> so, so how how many how many siblings do you have, or or you know nephews and cousins and all that? Here, here in the locally, yeah, there's a few of us around town. Uh, Dad's obviously over at Owasso. He's kind of the the blanket chip name uh, forger, and then the rest of us are trying to keep up. Um, I've got a uh, uh, a second cousin uh, out at Mustang Lee uh, uh, coaching their football program. I've got a first cousin um, that's down at uh, LSU Shreveport. Uh, coaching basketball down there uh Kyle Blankenship he might be the best one of all of us to be honest with you but um yeah there's there's a few of us out there I've got two brothers that uh, have coached previously they're both in medical sales they got smart and are making money now but yeah we're (laughs) we're all around so with that being said is this something that you always imagined doing going from the very beginning with your dad being in the profession I did not. Um, you know, I knew I was going to play. Um, I knew I wanted to play at the at the highest level, highest level possible, and as long as I could. And um, I didn't really realize I wanted to coach until probably about midway through my collegiate career. I kind of realized that this is what I was going to do. But no, I didn't grow up thinking that this was going to do it. It, it just kind of it kind of organically, you know, came about. So I'm sure you're you're like me. I mean, probably since you could remember, you thought you were going to be playing at, in the NFL and and you're going to be one of the top notch guys with Nike commercials and all kinds of fun stuff. But so how did it, how did it start off for you as an athlete? Uh, I would say um, somewhere probably freshman year, I finally started experiencing a little bit of success. Uh, I didn't start playing until sixth grade. Um, so it took a little bit um, as we went through high school, uh, started getting a little attention from uh, colleges and uh, then had my opportunity to go play collegiately. Uh, ended up choosing University of Tulsa. Uh, my senior year transferred to Eastern Washington, finished up there and then was signed by the Dolphins uh, out of there was just briefly, you know, I wasn't good enough to hang around, but. Uh, then bounced around playing some arena ball, some CFL, uh, those type of things. And then uh, uh, tapped into the coaching world with dad at Union back when he was still there. Uh, and then Fred brought me on at Union. Um, and that was kind of the beginning of my coaching world. Josh played quarterback at Union for his father. How'd that go? Stay with us on Ford High School Weekly and find out. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with Broken Arrow's new head football coach, Josh Blankenship. So I'm sure I'm sure most people know that you did play for your dad at Union, but I'm you know what what for those who don't know how how did that go for you? I mean, what position did you play, and and you know what, what sum up your career over there in high school? I was a quarterback. Played my junior and senior year for dad as a I mean as a starter. Um, you know, I haven't thought about it in a long time, but it was, uh, it was a really special time. You know, um, I think he coached me different than he did his other players because I was his son. Um, but it was, uh, you know, it was a unique thing. You know, when, when you went home, you were still talking about it. It wasn't, uh, you know, there was no, there was no point where you got to turn it off. It was, um, it was always, it was always 24 seven, you know quarterbacking for the Union Redskins at the time. So, I mean, we have this conversation with many players uh, as far as uh, coaches' sons or or coaches that coach their son. And so we like to ask this question quite often here at Ford High School Weekly. So what was that relationship like? You you mentioned that 
it was football 24 seven. A lot of people this day and age, you hear uh, a situation where once we get inside the truck or once we get to the house, it's no more football. I'm completely dad. So you're saying it was kind of the opposite situation for you? Yeah, he was, he was always dad. Um, but there was never a, uh, I don't think there are any rules as far as turning it off. Um, it was kind of a combo of uh, dad coach, um, football life. Um, it just all went together. There, I don't think we, I don't think we ever had a rule where we turned it off. It was just kind of what we did. So cur curious to hear this response. Did you ever call your dad dad on the football field or at the house did you call him coach? Good question. And I don't know if I completely remember, but um, I don't remember ever calling him coach. Um, but there was there was always the yes, sir. Okay. Um, so that was always there. But that might have been just the upbringing more than the uh, the coach factor. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I've been in that inside those locker rooms too. I'm pretty sure the players would have gave you a hard time if you would have you referred to to a dad or something like that on the field. I, I was pretty careful, if I remember correctly, not to say dad. Uh, that, <laughs> that would have been kind of embarrassing. Yeah, very much so. So, what was the recruiting uh, life like for you as a recruit, being one of the, you know one of those top notch quarterbacks in this area? How did that come about, and and how was it? And how was that whole you know recruiting world for the for two years at, at Union? That this is this is interesting. You're like really taking me back here. Um, <laughs> What, what I really remember was uh, what I would call, and again, I'm dating myself here, but um, I always considered that year I came out as the year of the quarterback. Um, we had Jason White. Um, we had uh, Oso Pogai, who I played in the semis, who also went to Oklahoma State. Jason went to OU. It was, there was a ton of quarterbacks that year. Um, and I was one of them. And Tulsa was the, you know, the the hometown school uh, that we always went to team camp at. Uh, coach Raider was the head coach, played for uh, my dad uh, or played with my dad, sorry. And then uh, Rocky Felker was the OC um, who I got pretty close with and um, just got to a point where that's where I decided that that's where I wanted to be. Now, everybody always has these questions for you, you know, Jinx and, and Union guys. I mean, what's some of your uh, best in backyard bowl memories playing, uh, you know, in that rivalry game? Uh, I remember coming uh, to Union in sixth grade, um, and we went all those years and never beat Jinx. Um, and then my senior year in high school was the first time we beat Jinx. We, and this was before it was, you know, called the Backyard Bowl. We played at their place uh, and beat them, I think it was like 55-45, really high-scoring deal. Uh, and then ended up seeing them. I remember shaking hands with all those guys. And, and we knew all those guys, you know, Ben Bowling, Matt McCoy, uh, Sterling, uh, all those guys we were all friends with um, off the field. And I remember shaking hands with them. Uh, after that game saying, hey, we'll see you in the state championship. And then we ended up playing them in the state championship. And kind of the cool thing looking back on it was that was the, you know, there was a obviously a history of Jinx and Union playing the state championships, but that was the first one. And it, it was it's kind of cool looking back to be a part of that. Um, but, yeah, and they beat us. Um, the only consolation prize I'll take from that state championship is that I married a Jinx cheerleader. So uh, I feel like I, I want something there. Yeah. <laughs> you certainly did, Coach. <laughs> certainly did. Hey, you might not have won the battle, but you won the war. <laughs> That's what I tell myself, at least. Josh decided to play college football in his hometown at TU. We'll talk about his college career when Ford High School Weekly returns. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with Broken Arrow's new head football coach, Josh Blankenship, about his college football career. Now let's uh, talk about your your TU days. I mean, how how was your experience at TU and, and and being a Golden Hurricane? Never forget it. It was unbelievably special. Um, you know, I'm I'm a big believer that that's where that's the time of your life where you really become a man, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's what happened for me at the University of Tulsa. 
um, difficult time because we weren't very good. Um, the head coach that I went to play for, Coach Raider, uh, got fired midway through my uh, freshman season. Um, so it was it was a lot of hard times, but uh, very rewarding uh, in the long run. Um, and then obviously playing for, um, you know, there in my home city was, was a special deal. So that's what I want to talk to you about a little bit. I mean, the decision to play so close to home and go to school so close to home, what went into making that decision? Cause for me personally, I, I mean, I from Dallas, went to Oklahoma state four hours away and kind of sound found myself a little home there. What was it for you to stay so close to home? What came to making that decision? Uh, this is going to sound a little, uh, maybe hokey to some people, but, um, it was a, uh, very, uh, spirit led decision that, um, uh, I felt like I was supposed to go there. Um, prayed on it for a long time. Um, got some great advice from, a. Uh, a hero of mine, he said, uh, you know, when you think you've made that decision, sleep on it one more night. And if you wake up and still feel the same way the next morning, then pull the trigger. And uh, that that's kind of was the process. Um, ironic to today's times. Um, I didn't make that decision until I think it was like mid January. Mm. And nowadays that would be a late decision. Uh, back then I was like the first um the first guy, first prospect to uh, make a commitment. And that was considered early back in 1999. So with that being said, you make the decision to go to TU, you stay close to home, you, you have some, you know, some rough patches. I know as, as a player, when the coach that brings you in there leaves, you're kind of in that no man's land of trying to, you know, impress the new coaches and, and, and find your footing once again and making a, a good impression. How was that, especially with so many kids doing being in that situation nowadays? How could you shed some light on that? Uh, yeah, look, again, you're taking me back, man. I haven't thought about some of this stuff in a long time. Um, it was it was weird. Um, there apparently was a lot of uh, assumption that uh, I might have been considering leaving and and i wasn't um and it was it wasn't until two years later that, that i decided to transfer for my senior year but um yeah the transition was weird and uh there was a lot of stuff uh you know i ended up getting benched at one point and uh uh looking back on it man the i would say the the biggest thing i remember is um uh my my younger brother caleb uh, came as a tight end two years after I got there. And I remember that was like the, my biggest concern was with all this going on because it was, it was played out pretty big in the media. Um, and I was kind of worried about him is I would say my biggest memory from that, but he, he, he panned out. All right. He, he had a great career. Yeah. With, with that being said, when when you got benched and you were going through all that adversity and, and going through all that through the media, was that some of the biggest adversity you faced in your life? I mean, speaking for a guy who's kind of, you know, come from a career where he had some up and downs as well. Uh, it, how Was that the, one of the biggest adversities in your life and one of the toughest times? Looking back on it, it was at that time. It's It, it feels silly to say that now, you know having dealt with real life um, and real life challenges. But at that point in time, sure, uh, that was one of the biggest things I'd faced, sure. When we come back, we'll find out how Josh Blankenship became the head coach of the Broken Arrow Tigers. Ford High School Weekly, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with the head ball coach over there at Broken Arrow, Coach Blankenship. Coach, so so tell us how the, the BA job came about. I mean, what transpired? You, you mentioned it briefly, but I mean, in detail, what, how did it uh, turn, uh, come up? Um, we would, as a family, come back to uh, uh, the area every Christmas for about two weeks. Uh, Mom and dad, um, they've got a unbelievable spread out there in Bigsby and so it's it's just always been a thing that we we came back for about two weeks every Christmas and while I was here 
Um, I got a phone call from Steve Dunn just asking if I'd be interested in having a conversation about the job. And I, I wasn't looking, I was very happy with where I was at. And, uh, um, I said, you know, I'll never turn down a conversation. Um, I said, yeah, I'd be happy to have a conversation and, and came in and met with, um, all the athletic directors and, and associate superintendent, uh, Chuck Perry, who I'd worked for before at union. And, you know, we just started talking and, uh, I would just say the the connection, uh, the chemistry, the relationships were immediate, and uh, it became evident to me very quickly that this is a place I wanted to be at. A um, couple days went by. Uh, they wanted to meet again. Um, I brought Lindsay, my wife, with me, and mainly because I wanted her to, I wanted her to meet everybody that I had been visiting with, and. Uh, we left that meeting and knew that's what we wanted to do. That's where we wanted to be. And um, I've said it a hundred times, and I sincerely mean it. It's the people here um, from top down, from Dr. Vincent to all the administration to everybody here. It They're unbelievable. And um, everybody wants everybody to succeed. And they're doing everything they can to uh, contribute to that. And... Uh, that was evident in the meetings, and it's it's proven true since I've been here since January. It's been unbelievable. Speaking of, you've been there since January. What do you think about the kids and the athletes that you're you're looking to coach? Uh, the kids are uh, unbelievable. Um, they're hungry. Um, they desperately uh, want to hear uh, the direction you want to go. Um, they, they all will run through a brick wall if you ask them to, um, we've got some, some very talented kids and then we've got what, what excites me more than just the talented kids is we've got an abundance of what I used to call program kids back at union guys that have just grown up in it, wanting to be BA tigers and, uh, are ready and willing to do whatever you ask them to do. So what kind of nuance or, or or words of wisdom do you give to the kids in that situation because they're facing a situation where again like we said earlier there's a new coach in town they gotta impress them they gotta work harder that like there's a there's a blank slate for for these individuals so what is what is your motto or what are you looking for from these kids to to show you who's going to be on the field on that first team yeah i think there's yeah, I think there's kind of two uh, two areas, um, and the first one is sounds a little bit like a cop out, but it's it's the reality is is none of it matters until we put pads on. Um, so until we put pads on, trying to come up with a depth chart or trying to figure out who's going to be what or who's going to do this or that, it's kind of silly conversation until we start hitting hitting pads. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, for me, um, in building the culture and, and the, the team that we want to have, it's how can you respond to the coach's direction? Um, you know, how, and this goes against culture uh, in society today, but, but it really is important in a team. How compliant and how quickly can you comply? Um, so if a coach gives a command, how quickly can you respond and do it the right way? Um, these kids, what's awesome about these kids is, is their work ethic is, is awesome. Um, I think the, the thing I'm trying to get done right now is not just, um, maniacal effort, but focused effort. Um, so when we're in the weight room, it's not just, Hey, you got a sheet and you see what you're supposed to get done and you just bang it out. I want it more structured in the sense of, uh, coach command, player response, um, and really that all goes to, you know, once we're in a game in a chaotic environment, we call a play or we call it whatever we do. Um, we don't have time in the game to have the conversation about, um, you know, coach, why did you, why are you calling this on fourth and one? Um, so there's a little bit of training in that going on right now. Um, and I would say that's the biggest thing I'm looking for right now is who are the guys that are not just going to work hard, but are going to work smart and hard. And, uh, and then that's all set up for once we get the pads on and then we'll see who, who the dudes are. 
Speaking of the dudes, I mean, you got a couple of them on that squad. I mean, that ESPN performance last year was was very impressive. But uh, other, have you seen any tape of these guys play, or, and do you have any expectations going into into the upcoming season? Um, you know, you've got expectations of your seniors. You know, you want them to lead. Um, and then you, I'm fully aware of of the guys that are getting the offers from everybody in the country, and Marion and RJ and. Um, you know, those guys, you know, there's expectations that they're going to live up to that. Um, and we've had we've had some of those conversations. But, um, you know, other than that, it's it's wait till we put the pads on. I mean, I, I've watched film on all these guys, but um, until I see um, what all of these guys do within the system that we're going to run, um, it's a wait and see kind of situation. All right, and I, and I know this is kind of down the line, and, and hopefully we, we we here at your view can be a part of it, but that that Blankenship battle that's going to be <laughs> going down, Owasso versus Broken Arrow, uh, what, what, can you, what can you tell us about that, or is there any expectations, or what are you looking forward to about that aspect? You know, I, you know other than the the trash talking that we've been doing and as, as I've been living over at Mom and Dad's for the last three months, um, <laughs> it's really – just about broken arrow you know and in these guys um and giving them the best opportunity to win every game we can um so i know that's a lot of fun stuff for other people to talk about but uh um i'm excited to be back here i'm excited to coach these kids um and you know coaching against dads just kind of one of those side things that's more for other people to be honest with you it's going to be fun to have Josh Blankenship back in Oklahoma high school football. Be on the lookout for those B.A. Tigers in 2021. Three seconds, two seconds at the buzzer on the way. That's good. Check out yourview.com slash OK every day for highlights and replays of Ford Game of the Week. And remember, guys, only the best in Oklahoma make the Ford High School Weekly. So until next time, thank you for watching. And I'm your host, Deanna Mate. <laughs>